for good grades. I wish I was better at relationships. I wish I was an artist. I wish I had a better relationship with my wife. I wish for a life full of happiness. I wish I may. I wish I might. Hello there. Happy Monday. You are with Beyond Wishful Thinking. My name is Sherry. Welcome to my podcast. Below you will find a link to my booklet about energy. It's an energy guide. It's a chance for you to work with a life coach and get a sense of what kinds of things we work with. What I like to help people understand is that when you free your mind and heart of things that weigh you down, you are increasing energy. And energy isn't necessarily how quickly you walk. It is about what you are able to think more clearly about and have more energy around. Uh, So hopefully that's something that you could take a look at. So my topic today is the mystery around adulthood. A couple things that I have often said uh, in my life with my children are things like just because an adult has an adult body doesn't mean they grew up. And we could suppose that means maturity, but what I'm getting at with that is that they don't have everything they need to be a well-functioning adult. I remember one time my daughter went to a friend's house and when she came home, she said to me, she would have been somewhere between 13 and 15. And she said to me, oh my goodness, mom, that girl's dad is like a kid with a job. And I thought how astute that was because that person wasn't the most responsible person as far as we would see responsibility in an adult. So it's something I've been thinking about. I know I'm trying to help a lot of people uh, in the age group of 18 to 35 understand where they are in their lives and what they want for themselves. And there is so much confusion. So the first thing to think about is we talk about our childhood a lot. I find that interesting. I think it's because we have a perception that it impacts us, but I also think it's because we put a lot of thought into that when we don't feel like it went well or when we feel like it's better than what we currently have. So if we think about adulthood, we think of sort of between 16 and 18, we get to do some things and between 18 and 21, I believe, depending on the country, um, you can start to drink. And then we are slowly discovering or recently, I should say, discovering that the uh, teenage brain isn't fully developed until 25. So there are some people who feel like the age of adulthood should really be considered from 25 forward. And yet, just because you reach an age doesn't mean you have everything you need. On that note, I know that most often lately, if you hear parents talking, you hear a lot of things about what we think the school should be teaching our children. And so I found one list of those kinds of things. And I'm not against the idea that this would be something that we should teach our children. But what I am sort of fascinated by is that that's where we feel we want to put the energy. And so some of the list for that was, um, let me just get to the top here. Life skills every adult should have. How to read a pay stub. Absolutely important to teach our children. Is that what's going to make them an adult though? So we did have that discussion. Um, Please understand that your employer can make a mistake. The computer system they use can make a mistake. You need to make sure that you're filling out your timesheets correctly. There's a lot of learning and teaching that can go into that. It is a great skill, but is it the one that makes them an adult? Manage a bank account. It certainly will help them with responsibility as far as what goes in and what goes out and how they can look after themselves. But is that, again, on its own, especially a marker for adulthood? Pay the bills. Again, yes, great skill. We should teach that, teach the importance of it, have an awareness that it needs to be done. Um, But you could have some people who understand paying bills that don't have responsibility for themselves and the people around them. Um, Use credit sensibly, file a tax return make a budget, 
um, carry insurance. It makes me kind of wonder if this article was put out by an insurance company, rent an apartment, clean an apartment, how to do your laundry, how to cook a meal and how to shop for groceries. Those are things that are definitely important, but I honestly think those are things that we could be teaching our children in their adolescent years. Those are things that they will just learn if they are around you and if they have some ability to be helping with those things. And so should our schools teach that? I don't know. Um, maybe some of the budgeting, but couldn't we maybe also work on teaching some of that? So I also found some really cute uh, comics and we all see them on Instagram and everywhere we, we sort of see the things that we look at. But I did enjoy um, one of them. It says uh, the four stages of adulthood. Radult, I can do whatever I want. Sadult, I wish I could do what I wanted. Madult, kids today think they can just do whatever they want. Dead alt. It's a tombstone and it says, this is not what I wanted. And I thought it was kind of interesting because we do have that perception of can't wait to be an adult because then I can do whatever I want. There's a perception that you don't have to follow the rules maybe, or that you can set your own and you can. But again, I caught myself saying to somebody in the last couple of weeks, sure, as an adult, you can do whatever you want, but you also pay the price of doing whatever you want. So as a child or an adolescent, maybe even a teen, they make mistakes and we help them learn through their mistakes. And as adults, we can make mistakes and learn, but it feels like maybe the mistakes are more costly, maybe partially because we're responsible for other human beings. Um, it, we're responsible for the things that we do. And so there's no one to maybe help or support us in the mistakes that we make. So because of these ideas, I started to do a little bit more research. Eric Erickson is a psychologist um, who I have come across and enjoy some of his uh, theories. And one of the things that he talks about is the eight stages of adulthood. Um, and his stages I find interesting because <clears throat> he talks about, he does have very specific um ages for all of these. So infancy is birth to 18 months, early childhood, two to three years, preschool, three to five, school age, six to 11, adolescence, 12 to 18, young adult, 19 to 40, middle adult, 40 to 65, and maturity, 65 to death. And then he has his theory. So what I like about his theory is that each stage builds on a preceding stage and paves the way for following periods of development. In each stage, he believes that as people, we need to experience a conflict that serves as a turning point in our development. So these conflicts are centered on either developing a psychological quality or failing to develop that quality. So when you think of the things that he speaks of in these different stages, stage one, which is infancy, birth to 18 months, what we are learning as people is trust versus mistrust. So the first stage is that the child is utterly dependent upon the adult or caregiver for everything they need to survive, including food, love, warmth, safety, nurturing. If a caregiver fails to provide adequate responses of those things, the outcome is if it's successful, they develop trust. The child will feel safe and secure in the world. Caregivers who are not consistent, emotionally unavailable or rejecting, they contribute to feelings of mistrust in the children under their care. And so then failure to develop trust results in fear and a belief that the world is inconsistent and unpredictable. So they don't have a sense of 100% trust or 100% doubt. Um, Erickson believed that successful development was about striking the balance between the two opposing sides. Stage two, what you're learning with your children is autonomy versus shame and doubt. So the second stage, um, takes place during early childhood and it's focusing on them developing a greater sense of their personal control. So that's often when 
Um, the essential theme is that children need to develop that personal control over their physical skills and their sense of independence. So potty training plays an important role here. They learn how to walk, all of those personal physical skills that they need to learn to have control. The outcome is the children who struggles and who are shamed for their accidents may be left without a sense of personal control. Success during this stage of psychological development leads to feelings of autonomy. A failure results in feelings of shame and doubt. So if you don't get autonomy, personal control, then you can have been living with the idea of shame and doubt. Stage three is initiative versus guilt. So stage three um, of psychological development is children need to begin asserting control and power over their environment now. So this is when they would have um, play dates. They're trying to sense what, what is the balance and how they are with people. And people who fail to acquire these skills are left with a sense of guilt, self-doubt, and sometimes lack initiative. Stage four is industry versus inferiority. So this happens in the early school years, approximately ages five to 11, through social interactions in that environment. Children begin to develop a sense of pride in their accomplishment and their abilities. They need to cope with new social academic demands. So success can lead to a sense of competence where failure results in feelings of inferiority. So you can see where being an adult is building from the things we learn as children. And maybe that's why we focus so much on our childhood is we have a sense that that's where the groundwork is laid, but maybe we're not fully understanding that allowing the children to learn and develop with our safety around them versus the things that maybe we do where we put too much emphasis on the importance in a way of it applying to us is what changes how they can respond and act. Intimacy versus isolation. Young adults need to form intimate, loving relationships with other people. Success leads to strong relationships while failure results in loneliness and isolation. This stage covers the period of early adulthood when people are exploring personal relationships. Erickson believed it was vital that people develop close, committed relationships with other people. Those who are successful at this step form relationships that are enduring and secure. So each step builds on skills that you learn in the previous step. So if you learn about safety in your environment when you're in your trust mistrust, then the next part, you'll be more brave to try your personal autonomy. And if you do well there and you're not feeling uh, shame and guilt, then you'll be able to go to the next step and the next step. And eventually you are an adult that has a, an ability or a skill set. It doesn't mean you're going to be the perfect adult. There's you know no such thing as a perfect human. And so it's the building steps that we need. So if you have anything in your childhood that was upsetting, we lose a parent, we move in foster care, we have parents who are ill, we have parents who have come from their own trauma and haven't had their own stepping stones done well, then that's where we struggle with adulthood. So I just think the messaging I'd like to get across for people is adulting isn't just about getting to do what we want. It's about arriving to this point in our life where we take all these skills and then we go and we do the things that we want to do. And that leads me to another man and his name is um, Levinson. And he had a, diff a similar theory, but he believed that one of the things that we do when we start to become an adult is we have a dream. And the dream is what we want for our future. And all of the stages that we do in our life from our early adulthood through is us using the skills we learned to accommodate the dream that we have. So to finish Erickson, before I jump to Levinson, he says that the final psychological stage occurs during old age and it's integrity versus despair. And it's focused on reflecting back on life. At this point in our development, people are looking back and on their lives and determine if they're happy with the life they lived or if they regret the things they did or didn't do. 
At this stage, people <clears throat> who look back on a life they feel was well lived will feel satisfied and ready to face the end of their life with a sense of peace. Those who look back and only feel regret will instead feel fearful that their lives will end without accomplishing things they feel they should have. <clears throat> so there are strengths and weaknesses to Erickson's theory. Uh, one of the criticisms is that there aren't exact steps that we can follow. It's a theory. Uh, the theory fails to detail exactly what type of experiences are necessary. And for this purpose and for me discussing adulthood, this is a huge topic. Many papers have been written on. It's going to take more than me just awakening you to this idea. Um, but it's just a thought and a theory, as it stated, that we could maybe start looking at what we're doing. So if you get to be 40 and you haven't met those steps, the good news is, is you can start then as long as the steps get made. So it would be a bit like maybe baking a cake and realizing that you forgot to put in an ingredient. If you can put the ingredient in before the cake is finished, you can save the cake. And so don't feel despair if you think, well, I didn't have the trust or the autonomy I needed as a child, so I'm done for. It's more about understanding these things and saying, what could I add in now to change this for me? Why was Erickson's theory important? It's significant because it addressed development throughout a person's life, not just our childhood. It also stressed the importance of social relationship in shaping personality and growth at each point in our development, which I really liked because in order to be in relationship with people, we need to be around people. We need to be people. And so we need to be able to be formative around people and learn about ourselves from those situations. So I really kind of enjoyed that idea of an adult. Um, so Daniel Levinson, he has theories of the seasons of life, as he calls them. And he, this is what I referred to earlier. He says that when we enter the adult world, the first thing that we need is a dream. The individual's sense of self in the adult world and it's the core of the life structure. The nature of the dream will vary, but most describe some combination of occupational family and community roles. A dream can be precise or mythical, so that speaks to the different types of people we are. But in order to build and to move forward, we kind of would like to have at least an idea of where we want to go with that. And so maybe that's where some of our people who are struggling in our 18 to 35 age bracket are because maybe they weren't taught even to do to do that. So uh, entering the adult world, 22 to 28 years old is the time for building the life structure is what Daniel Levinson says. And there's four major tasks in this period. It's forming a dream, giving it a place in the life structure, forming mentor relationships, forming an occupation and forming love relationships, marriage and family. So there's four step structure to kind of what you're doing between 22 and 28. And that's the age group that I feel sometimes in the last 10 to 15 years has possibly been struggling with their, who they are and what's the expectation. And I think some of that's because generationally things have been changing. Um, the boomers, as were so lovingly referred to, they had a different life than the people who um, are living now. And they're the people who were trying to give the steps to get to adulthood and maybe got caught up in the ego um, of wanting their children to have what they didn't have and to become more than they were able to because of the life um, restrictions they may have felt. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about what we really want for adults is for them to understand who they are. Understand that the, the joy of adulting is not to get to do whatever you want, but to understand who you are. And when you understand who you are, then you won't be as easily swayed by another person's idea 
Um, not that I'm suggesting stubbornness. I'm meaning more about following your dream as Levinson speaks to understanding that it isn't just about understanding our pay stub and all of that. Those are good things to know. But I think if we're going to add that to our curriculum, maybe we should also be teaching the balance of some of those words. I, I discover in my coaching, there's people who don't understand autonomy and shame. And um, most people understand guilt. Um, just what those, what those feelings and emotions are and how they make us make different choices. And so when I think of adults that seem to maybe be more stable, those are people who have clear ideas in their own mind of their own steps. And like I've said, I think we refer to childhood so much because there was a phase in psychology where we started to learn that how we parented our children mattered, but we haven't maybe done the extra work on how do we create adults. One of the things I came across I thought was really interesting, we have a high ratio of young teens and young adults up to 30 living with their parents. And there are people who say, well, that's not good. That's not healthy. They can't learn if they don't move out or get out on their own. And what I came across even with that is it isn't about the children leaving their parents or being separate of them. It's the emotional connection that they have to their parents. So if you have been successful in raising children who know how to think for themselves and they have a job and they're not relying on you to support them emotionally, then they are stepping in the right direction. And I don't mean when I talk about supporting emotionally, like we want support systems around us, our family and our friends are those people, someone to call, someone to lift us up, but not to not be able to function if we don't have that person holding us up or propping us up. So there was a fear that if my child was still living with me at a late age, that I failed as a parent. But one, I've come across a couple different things in the last little bit, kind of dealing with this. And really what that is, is, it is the emotional connection. Do you allow them as an equal hierarchy as an adult, where they um, know how to make decisions and don't need you other than maybe a sounding board, but they, they can do it on their own. And that's really clear. I, I'm wondering if I um, even wrote down the specific quote, but I don't think I did. So the idea is that we are shaped by the events that we are in. So when we are a child, we are shaped by all of the events. And don't be overwhelmed and think I now have to log and figure all that out. But understanding that when we allow our children to figure things out with our support, they're going to have more belief in their capability and their abilities. And that gives them the autonomy. When they're super young, if they're being looked after and their safety and, um, and, and ability, then they know that the world can be a trusting place and there's more chance for them to be able to trust in the next step, which was the potty training and walking, which gives them personal control over their personal space. Then they need space or control over their social space. So play dates, but it's not doing a play date where you are controlling and manipulating. You're providing the space, you're letting them learn, and then you guide them in the way that makes sense for your parenting type or style. So I hope this made some sense. I find I have a lot of um, enjoyment in helping people through these phases. And I have a lot of knowledge that I can pull out. And when I started to research it for a podcast, it's, it's huge. And there's so many variables. I know um, I, I, I talk about Barbara Coloroso and Eric Erickson and Daniel Levinson and um, the men that I, I mentioned last week. <clears throat> there's a lot there, but when you start to look at very different people, there is a line that seems to be being drawn between this thing about 
how to create finished adults versus people who, and we're never, we're not finished until we're done, but there's the phases like I spoke about. <clears throat> and um, Levinson talks about even in the 60s, or like when we're 60, that some of what makes us either stop growing and think I'm just waiting to die or to keep moving is the stage that we did before. And if we've been successful at that stage, there are still things we want to learn or to give. And if you find yourself in a, in a later stage, feeling a bit of regret or um, no energy to want to move forward, it could be that you need to kind of finish up some of the, um, what was the word I used, events that happened in your 40s and 50s that maybe you didn't learn the thing you needed to learn in order for you to keep moving forward in the next, um, I want to say generations, decades. So I'm going to probably talk more about this. I just hope you enjoyed this concept that childhood is important. It's necessary for us obviously to develop, but what truly makes an adult is someone who had those stages and had the ability to learn about themselves and come out the other side with the skill. And that's when you will have peace in your adulting. So I guess to summarize, what I mean about the mystery of being an adult, it's this. It isn't being 16 or 18 or 30. It isn't having a car or a house. It's about what we learned throughout our life. And hopefully by the time we're in our 20s and 30s, we have the skills we need to be well-rounded. So if we're struggling in relationships, then maybe the stage where we learned about our environment wasn't a good time for us. And so we don't have that skill. And so our relationships struggle. Or if we don't have a sense of who we are, maybe we missed the session about how to be autonomous. And I think that was age two to three. And it's not something we need to beat ourselves up over. We just need to understand the importance of childhood is what we learn, not whether we had the same as someone else. A, a harsh childhood might actually give us more skills than an easy childhood. And so it was more focusing on what makes an adult rather than looking forward to being an adult because of the supposed freedom it gives us. And we should want to be an adult because we have a dream and we have skills and we want to bring a group of people along with us and they may be our family or our friends. And when we e eventually reach the time that we leave this earth, we will look back with a sense of accomplishment and we will have known that sure we made mistakes, but those mistakes are what drove us forward and we're happy with the end result of what we had. And when we arrive at adulthood, there won't be so much fear and so much uncertainty and maybe our drug abuse and suicide and, and alcoholism will decrease in those ages where people are struggling to figure out what their place in society really is. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great Monday. As much as I enjoy discussions, I also want to provide a service to people who would like more. If you want to do more than listen, get in touch with me with the links in the description. You can also email me through hello at beyondwishfulthinking.ca. And I'd like to give you content you enjoy, so please leave a review wherever you're listening to this podcast. If you're watching through my YouTube channel, leave your comments below. If you want more of Beyond Wishful Thinking podcasts, make sure to subscribe for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you are listening right now.